Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And this is a 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. And today we're going to take you around it and give it a partial review. We can't yeah. take it on the road. But before we do, take a moment, click that subscribe button down below. And hit that bell notification up above so you never miss one of our videos. That's right. So what do you say, Nate? Let's, Let's go for it. a review. <laughs> that works. Jeep says the all new 2022 Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer models boast an elegant design with a timeless silhouette featuring countless meticulously crafted details that come together to deliver an undeniable presence. Yeah, I think so. The new exterior design is confident, crafted with a wide stance and features large architecturally drawn windows for enhanced outward visibility. The Grand Wagoneer will compete in the premium luxury SUV segment and take American premium to an entirely new level. Every seat in the Grand Wagoneer is a first class experience, creating a modern interpretation of the American dream. Executed with an overtone of artisanal adventure and it celebrates what Grand Wagoneer is all about. Grand Wagoneer is for those with a sense of adventure and for celebrating the American dream that is discovering idyllic parts of the country in comfort and style. Yeah, I think they nailed it. <laughs> this new Jeep Wagoneer is available in seven different trim levels, starting with the Wagoneer Series 1 at $59,995, the Wagoneer Series 2 at $69,995, and the Wagoneer Series 3, it's $74,995. Then there is the Grand Wagoneer Series 1 at $88,995. The Series 2 at $95,995. The Obsidian at $100,995. And the Series 3 at $105,995. This Grand Wagoneer is powered by 6.4 liter 16 valve V8 with sequential multi-port electronic fuel injection that produces 471 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. It's driven by a Torque Flight automatic eight-speed automatic overdrive transmission, and it has four by four quadra drive two four-wheel drive system. This Jeep Grand Wagoneer is presented here in bright white, and it has a light gray leather interior and the satin American walnut trim and a beautiful suede headliner. Out front, the premium LED lighting with signature daytime running lamps flank the grill and provide a premium appearance with a gloss black background to accent its jewel-like appearance. And I agree, it does look like a nice fine piece of jewelry. The LED daytime running lights form an elegant outline of the grill and help emphasize the width and overall front end of the vehicle. There are LED lights with dynamic turn signals and premium LED headlamps and fog lights. And of course, it does have that legendary seven slot chrome grille, body colored front bumper, and gloss black lower air, air intake with chrome lower trim. It also does have chrome front tow hooks. And up top, there is a flat sculpted hood, and above that, an acoustic laminated windshield. Let's take a look around the side. Had to zoom out, this is kind of a big vehicle, so I had to get the camera way back. But along the side, the side profile reveals a stately distinguished silhouette. And the clean roof line and an A-line that runs all the way around the vehicle pay homage to the original Wagoneer. See, this functional structural feature, uh, it features pillars that begin to define the rest of the vehicle instead of being hidden under lacquer. And I really do think that's a classy new modern take on the original Wagoneer. Now these are 22 by nine ultra finished aluminum wheels and they're wrapped in 285, 45, 22 inch Goodyear Touring Eagle all season performance tires. There's a 2.64 ratio two speed electronically shifted transfer case with four by four low active neutral full time active four by four operating modes. The front axle is an eight and a half inch ring gear with a 3.92 to one ratio and the rear has an electronic limited slip differential with a 10.2 inch ring gear and a 3.92 to one ratio as well. 
The front suspension is short and long arm independent with hybrid steel composite upper control arm, aluminum lower control arm, aluminum knuckle, coil springs with monotube shocks, or you can get the quadrilift air suspension with semi-active damping and solid or hollow stabilizer bar. Again, on the rear suspension then, standard would be a five-link independent rear suspension with coil springs and monotube load leveling shocks, or the optional quadrilift air suspension with semi-active damping and solid or hollow stabilizer bar, cast aluminum links, and high strength steel spring link. It does have four wheel ABS with 14.8 inch, 8, 8 inch front vented rotors and 14.76 inch rear solid rotors. And it does have the retractable side steps. Let's see if it's functioning right now. Yep, there they are. And I love the Grand Wagoneer spelled out in nice chrome block letters and you have the American flag there as well. Now these are body colored, powered, heated, power folding mirrors with the integrated LED turn indicators and they have the surround view camera and perimeter lights. And it does have body colored door handles and the front doors also have acoustic laminated glass to help reduce ambient road noise levels. There's chrome belt line trim and window trim and up top you see that it does have the chrome roof rack rails and a gloss black roof that kind of contrasts with that bodywork and it is a glass panoramic sunroof. Let's take a look around the back. Okay, I'll back this is a hands-free power tailgate with a fixed rear window with integrated wiper and washer and these are LED tail lights that stretch from the rear quarter panel across that power hands-free power lift gate achieving an upscale appearance and it looks really really good in person i love the chrome window surround and the grand wagoneer spelled out in big block chrome letters again spanning the width of the tailgate to give it a much wider presence there's a rear view camera as well and there are body colored rear bumpers with parking sensors and you have a gloss black lower panel with chrome trim and the red reflectors and reverse lights out of the corners. Tucked up underneath is a dual exhaust with dual four inch oval black chrome tips. Now, let's take a look inside. The cargo area, the second row seats are captain's chairs and the third row seats are split folding 60-40 and there are power folding seat controls on the passenger side of the cargo area where, and there's actually real metal tie down loops and under the flat floor is a small amount of additional storage as well. Max cargo volume with all the seats folded is 94.2 cubic feet. Max cargo volume with the third row folded only. Uh, so behind the second row is 70.9 cubic feet. And as you see it here, uh, maximum cargo volume is 27.4 cubic feet. Cargo floor length to the uh, back of the fr front seats to the sill is Roughly 89 inches from the second row to the rear sill is estimated to be 55 inches and cargo floor length to the third row here to the sill is 24 inches. Cargo width at the belt line, 47 inches. Cargo width internally at the wheelhouses is 51 inches. And floor to ceiling opening height, 34 inches. Getting something in and out of the vehicle, ground to uh, back end is 31.9 inches. Some of the safety systems available are automatic emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, adaptive cruise control with automatic stop and go, active lane management, blind spot monitoring, rear cross path detection, rear park assist sensors, switch activated electronic parking brake, and so much more. These things are loaded with safety and tech. All right, here's the button right over here on the side. I like that. Up next, let's talk about the dimensions. Okay, front track is 68.5 inches, rear track 68.3 inches. Max width with the mirrors is 94 inches. Overall length, 214.7 inches. Height, 75.6 inches. Wheelbase, 123 inches. It has a ground clearance of 11.6 inches. It has an approach angle of 25 degrees a departure of 24 degrees, and a breakover or ramp angle of 22 degrees. Maximum water fording. It can go through 24 inches of water safely. Has a curb weight, 6,420 pounds. Maximum payload, 1,360 pounds. 
and maximum towing is 9,850 pounds. It does have a turning circle of 38 feet, not bad at all for a big vehicle, and a fuel tank capacity of 26 and a half gallons. So how is it rated for safety? Well, it is brand new, so neither IIHS or National Highway Transportation Safety Administration have rated it at this point, but I'm sure it's in queue, so it'll be there. Performance, zero to 66 seconds. Top speed, no word yet, and 60 to zero braking, again, brand new vehicle, so no information yet. Well, what about its appearance? You know, I like the big, bold front grill and the LED lighting and this upright boxy design, which is definitely reminiscent of the original Wagoneers. And I got to say, I am a huge fan of those original Wagoneers. I just think they're an iconic look and I love them. Basic warranty, three years, 36,000 miles. Powertrain warranty, five years, 60,000 miles. And complimentary maintenance, five years, worry-free. Finally, big vehicle, so let's talk about economy. Well, 13 city, 19 highway, and 15 combined. So now let's take a look inside, but before we do, check out my notes in the description down below, and please take a moment, give us a like, leave a comment, and don't forget, click on that subscribe button down below. So what do you say, Nate? Take it away. Okay, stepping on the inside of the Grand Wagoneer is quite a treat. First of all, you're going to have uh, Palmero, uh, first of all, you're going to have Palmero leather, and it's on the, you know, it's on the door trim, it's on the console up here, and it's on the seats, okay? But you also have, uh, you know, a um, metal trim you know that that's that's been partially handcrafted you know and you got different textures so you got the smooth and then you got this texture right here which is different uh, but it is really nice and Jeep's gone to a great length uh, to to give it a distinct appearance now talk about distinct come along the door here we get this Macintosh sound system this is a 23 speaker uh, system and uh, Macintosh this is the the first time they've ventured into automotive um, audio uh, they're well known for audio, but this is their first venture and they've done it with Jeep. Now coming up uh, to the top here, of course, you've got your standard on lock and lock. You've got your window lockout, auto up and down all four windows. You've got your left, right mirror controls, plus your power folding if you twist it down here. Then up here, you, of course, you've got your seat controls and then, of course, you have two-person memory. Now, this will light up. Uh, right in here uh, when the car's running or when you first open the door and then right here uh, where I'm showing you there's a, an adjustment for the massage functions and of course you have a power adjustable headrest as well now uh, so that's 23 way adjustable seats on both sides past driver and passenger they're heated and ventilated and I love the Grand Wagoneer logo right here on the seat and in addition to it says Wagoneer on the door sill now the seats are, uh, of course, perforated right here. I love this uh, contrasting yellow stitching right here. Maybe you call it orange, um, but it looks really nice. And the seats are, are very, very, very comfortable. Down here, of course, you have your standard foot pedals. You get your foot rest. Coming up here, you do have your electronic parking brake. You have your switch for your auto lights. And then uh, right here, you have a switch control for dome lights. You got a switch control for your dashboard. Uh, uh, lights right here and you got your of course foot pedals to move forward and backwards this is a uh, tilt and telescope and it's powered and that button is right here now uh, behind the steering wheel it, it, typical to uh, Jeeps you have audio controls on this side and on the passenger side as well if I can get back there maybe there you can see them hopefully now on the bottom of the door, you're going to notice large storage areas here, plus a bottle uh, storage, and then a little shelf at the top here. But always in these full-size SUVs, you find lots and lots of storage. All right, so on the inside, of course, you know, we can't start it up because it's at the, uh, the Minneapolis Auto Show here. But, you know, you, here's your start-stop button right here. And then you have a, you got a 12.3-inch uh, digital dash right here. 
And then coming back, you of course have on your steering wheel controls, this is the side where you control your driver's information. You got your phone button, and then you got your phone, another like a phone off. Then over here is going to be your, you know, your cruise control on or off, your adaptive cruise, your set, cancel, resume, and then your steering, assist, uh, steering and lane assist right there. Um, it is a power tilt and telescope, of course. This is a monitor to watch you drive to make sure that you're paying attention to the road. And then, uh, you know, just look at the beautiful metal work that's uh, across this one. Sometimes you know, you'll, in here you'll get a, um, like an American walnut trim that looks really, really nice in there. But this looks really nice. I like the Grand Wagon here. Uh, now this screen right here is a 12 inch screen and uh, it has uh, Apple Car wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, uh, Bluetooth, AM and FM radio, Sirius XM, um, and of course, um, it also has a uh, Macintosh audio system. Uh, it's a 23 speaker, 1375 watt sound system. Now this is the first time Macintosh has ventured into auto. They are well known for their audio products. Uh, so this is an interesting venture. Um, I can't turn the system on, so I can't tell you how it sounds, but it looks great. Uh, all right, uh, down here, of course, you got physical controls for your climate, but down here, you've got more. This is a this is another 10.25 inch screen, and there are a total of uh, one, two, three of those in the car. So here, you've got you, know, you control your um, uh, defrost right here. You can look at your seats. You can look at the massaging. You can look at the rear seats to control them. The climate. You can turn the screen off there. Uh, so lots of things you can do on that screen. Down here, you've got a few physical buttons. This screen is one that is movable. So if you press that button, it'll go up. And then you, of course, got your wireless charging. You've got your two USB, uh, three USB uh, A's, three USB C's. Two of them are for the rear entertainment system and an HDMI connection for the passenger's 10.25 inch screen. Of course, right here, you got 12 volt outlet as well. So just loaded with outlets. Push that button again, and the screen will come back into uh, down. You've got your auto hold here. You've got your traction. Uh, you got your auto hold on or off right there. You've got your road mitigation system here. Traction control there. Your hazards here. Uh, you got your steering assist, parking right. You got your steering assist there. You got your parking assist there. Um, so I'm not sure which one that is. I got to look that up. Parking sensors, tow haul. Uh, mode and then of course uh, this one will power the screen on the passenger side down here of course you got your gear selector and then you've got your modes right here so you have rock sand mud snow auto and sport and then over here you have your height adjustment for the vehicle that's right there coming, back. coming down here you've got cup holders right here you've got another uh, spot for a cell phone holder right here and then you can, of course, close that cover. The uh, armrest itself, underneath it here, if I lift, if I push this up, you've got a, a freezer box here, and it is ice cold in here. It is freezer, uh, definitely, definitely a freezer, and it's large. At the top, you've got a sliding tray. If I put that back, you've got more USB-A and USB-C ports right there, and it's felt lined. It's a dampened opening. It's a, it's a good sized glove compartment as you'd expect, and it is felt lined. All right, there is the uh, passenger screen. This is a 10.25 inch screen, and you know it has, has sort of four main functions. It's it's a it's it's, 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 it's a co-pilot to help you help the driver. Uh, it's entertainment. You can it's, it'll work with uh, like an Amazon Fire TV. So all the things you would have on an Amazon Fire TV, you can you can have on here. Uh, and uh, of course then just entertainment. The rear view mirror is a digital mirror, so it runs off a camera in the back. And of course you have controls uh, for the menu on that right here, okay? And then if you flick the switch, it just becomes a regular mirror. All right, up in the ceiling up here, you've got, of course, your lights on or off here. You've got your uh, trunk release right here. Uh, you can push this to determine whether the lights come on or not. When the doors are open, you can turn all the lights on. And then these three have to do with your uh, panoramic sunroof. If you press right here, of course, you got a com you got a glass holder. And then if you pop it up heck halfway, you get a conversation mirror. 
The uh, home link buttons are up here on the driver's visor right here. And then, of course, on both sides, they each have a mirror and they are lit and they are telescoping. All right, in the second row, we continue with the large storage areas at the bottom of the door, including a bottle holder and another shelf up here. You got your Mac and some of your Macintosh speakers here. And then, of course, your unlock and lock buttons, your auto up and down window, another speaker up at the top here. And again, continuation uh, with the uh, Palmero leather and then the, uh, the steel and metal uh, trim that you have. Looks really nice. Okay, on the seat itself right here, Okay, if you want to fold it flat, you just pull this lever, and that, of course, will fold the, the headrest and fold the seat flat. And to put it back up, you just manually lift it up. Now, if you want to get in the third row, then you use the button that's on top here, and then you can just push it forward, and then you've got access to the third row. On the inside here, it is very, very comfortable. The, you know, of course, the, the, the second row seats will recline. Uh, they will also um, slide back and forth. On both sides, you have got 10.1 inch uh, entertainment screens. And these will, again, run Amazon Fire TV for auto is how they is how sort of how they classify it. But you do have plugins. You've got an HDMI plugin down here. You've also got a USB-C and then a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Okay, coming back a little bit further to that, you've got another 10.25 inch screen and this one runs your heated and ventilated seats in the rear and your climate. So if I turn that on, I got fan speed down here. I, got, I can control uh, the different modes and of course the temperatures. Now, right in front of that, on the back of the center console, um, this screen, uh, as far as I know, doesn't show anything. Uh, it's just uh, like a black plastic uh, trim. But you do have a USB-A on both sides. And down below, you do have a household outlet and a 12-volt outlet as well. Both seats have map pockets in them right here. And this is a massive center armrest right here. So uh, after the, uh, the climate screen... You have got cup holders with a cell phone holder right here. And then the same configuration up front. So I've got a top piece. I can slide back to reveal a USB-A and USB-C. It's felt lined. And if I open it, you've got just huge, huge amounts of storage in here. There are no additional plugins here, but uh, you, could, you could definitely fit a gallon of milk in there. I have got about an inch, inch and a quarter maybe of headroom. And knee room is ridiculous. I mean, I've got more knee room than than I have in my house. Uh, it's it's huge. Uh, all right, let's step into the third row. Okay, so in the third row here, um, this is where I was sitting in the third row, and I I've got like four inches of space right here. It's crazy. Okay, over here on both sides are the same now. Over here, I've got adjustments where I can tilt my seat forward, tilt it backwards, and I have a USB-C and a USB-A. And you can see that it is the same on both sides. In addition to that, you've got a cup holder, you've got a little bit of storage, and then you have one of your air vents right here. Now, uh, your reading lights are right up here. And you got a coat hanger right here. And then you have your own private sunroof with a manual shape. Okay. Now this thing in the ceiling is a camera system, is a, an optional one. Uh, this is an optional item, but in the infotainment screen, if it were working, if I uh, turn that on, I can see directly down into the third row and the second row. And in fact, it shows you two screens and on the larger screen, Wherever you click is where, is where the smaller screen zooms into, which is really nice. Um, you have uh, just lots of room, and for two adults, this would be quite comfortable. Uh, usually I say next up we're going to take it for a ride, but because it's the auto show, of course we can't take it for a ride. But I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, short review. Thanks for watching. Well, that's our review of the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer, and we appreciate you spending some time with us. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and please 
click on that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.